Hello and welcome to the magical world or the wizarding world of Harry Potter. It is that time of year again when Hogwarts students have to take their owls and in order to take your owls you have to figure out what you want to do with your life. Then you choose your owls based on your career. So I guess it's the OWLs, not the owls. But I'm gonna call it the owls because I'm lazy. We all already know this. So for those of you who aren't aware, Grost has put together a magical readathon every year that starts in April and students take their owls in April and then in July students take their newts and first step is you have to pick your career so you know which owls and which newts to take. The career I chose is the librarian career. Now a wizard librarian is not at all like a muggle librarian and for a wizard librarian it is much more of an like archaeologist like career. The job of a wizard librarian is to go out into the world and rediscover magical tomes that have been lost or stolen and then bring them back into the greater wizarding world. So the role of a librarian requires five owls and there are 12 owls in total. Because I am an overachieving Ravenclaw, as is seen on my shirt right here, I am going to take all 12 owls so I have the option to switch careers if I decide I want to or just because I'm an overachiever and I could easily read 12 books in a month. Another thing you will notice in my TBR is a lot of these books align with the TBR that came out on my channel yesterday. I will put it up in the cards over there and that is just because I already do 10 books every month based off of a century from the 20th century. This month is the 1930s so I'm reading one book published every month from 1931 to 1940. That's already 10 books. Adding an additional 12 on top of that is not realistic by any means so I will be combining a lot of books from those TBRs. Some rules to note with the owls is you cannot use the same book for more than one prompt. So if I am going to read all 12, I have to read 12 separate books. Even if one book works for multiple prompts, I still have to find another book for it. Outside of that, you just kind of have to follow the rules within the prompt. In order for it to count as a book, it has to be on Goodreads as a standalone. So if it's part of an anthology and you can only find it on Goodreads as part of that anthology, it doesn't count. But if it's a short story that you have in an anthology but you can find it on Goodreads as a standalone short story, it counts. Make sense to everybody? Great. So first we're going to cover the OWLs required to be a librarian. I'm going to stick the librarian page over here if you want to pause and read what being a librarian is about you can do that and we will cover the newts section of this in July when I take the newts in July. After I cover the books that I need for my chosen career I will cover the books that I chose for the remainder of the OWL prompts. So the first class I'm gonna put my wand down the first class I need to take for my OWLs as a librarian is the Ancient Ruins class and this year our focus is on the Heart Ruin. And for this ruin we need to read a book with either a heart on the cover or the word heart in the title. And I'm going to read Heart Stopper Volume 2. As you can see the word heart is in the title of the book. This is also a book that I need to read for my 
2019 Goodreads Choice Awards Challenge, so two birds, one stone. I read Heartstopper Volume 1 recently. It took me 20 minutes to read because this is a graphic novel. So I think this is going to be a really fast read and it was adorable. So totally down, ready to go with book one. So the next class is Arithmacy and this year we are studying the magical qualities of the number two, which stands for dualities or opposites, balance, because opposites are supposed to balance each other. The prompt for this is to read something outside of your favorite genre. Typically I would say my favorite genre is fantasy, but based off of the majority of the books that I've been reading so far this year, I've just been reading straight up fiction where like if you go to a bookstore it's just going to be in the fiction section. So as a balance to reading a lot of fiction books, I am going to read a non-fiction book and for this I am reading The Only Plane in the Sky by Garrett Graff. This is a non-fiction story based off of the attacks on September 11th, 2001 on the World Trade Center's and yeah, so the 9-11 terrorist attacks on the World Trade Centers in New York. This again is another book that I need to read for my Goodreads challenge, so I have it as a ebook loan from my library, so might as well knock it out while I've got it. Prompt number three is for Defense Against the Dark Arts which this year we're studying Grindelos and the prompt for this is a book set on the sea or coast and for it I am reading The Floating Admiral by a whole lot of authors. I covered this book in my 1930s reads that went up yesterday if you want to see that TBR. Uh, quick summary of this again because this is really awesome. It takes place on a boat or a yacht so it covers the prompt. There's a lot of water and a bunch of really popular mystery writers of the time got together and each wrote one chapter of this mystery and then passed the... so chapter one somebody wrote passed it on to another person who wrote chapter two who passed it on to another person who read chapter one and two and then wrote chapter three and you get this really interesting story of like a murder mystery and then at the end of the book in the appendix it goes through and each author says how they, when they wrote it, expected the story to end. So you get like a bunch of different perspectives and you get like a really awesome little mystery novel that was written in a fun way. So I'm excited to read this and like I said it covers the Defense Against the Dark Art prompt because it takes place on a boat in the middle of the ocean. My next class is History of Magic, which obviously is an important class for librarians, and this year in History of Magic we're studying witch hunts. So our prompt is to read a book with a famous witch or wizard, and obviously for this prompt I have to go with one of the most famous wizards of all time, and I am reading The Sword in the Stone by T.H. White. Again, this is the a book that I'm reading for my 1930s challenge, and it, the wizard is Merlin, who is author's wizard. I mean, everybody knows the Sword of the Stone story, right? <laughs> but yes, Sword in the Stone for History of Magic. The final class that I need an owl in is Transfiguration, and for Transfiguration this year we are 
learning about Animagnus. And those are shapeshifters, right? So this needs to have a book or a book series that contains shapeshifters. And again, I'm pulling double duty on this one. And I'm reading Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. Now, you're like, wait, your challenges this year are to read books from particular decades and 2019 Goodreads Choice Awards. How does a 2020 new release fit into any of your challenges? Well, I'm here to tell you. At the end of every year, I read the Goodreads Choice Awards in Fantasy, like all 10 nominations or the top 10 nominations for it. And fantasy books are chunky. So that's a really big challenge to do. And it's Sarah J. Mass. I am 100% sure that this book is going to be one of those 10 because Sarah J. Mass books are always nominated for Goodreads Choice Awards and this is her first adult fantasy one. So I am nearly 100% sure that this is going to be one of those 10. So if I can read this huge chunker of a book now, then it's going to save me the stress of reading it in November, December, plus the 20 decade books that I need to do for the month anyway. So Crescent City, Sarah J. Moss. Apparently there's shapeshifters in here. Somebody else read it and recommended this as a shapeshifter, so threw it in. And that five books for my career, but we gotta we gotta do the other seven, right? I mean, who are we kidding? We're Ravenclaws. We overachieve up in here. So the missing classes. First one is care of magical creatures, and our magical creature that we're caring for this year is the Hippogriffs, which means we need a book with a beak on the cover. None of the books that I'm really reading this month planned already had a beak on the cover, so I just kind of went through my stack of like physical TBR books that I had just hanging around and found this really weird book called Texting the Underworld by Ellen uh, Boreem, I think is how you say her name, and it has it has crows. And they've got beaks and it's pretty short so we're gonna text some underworlds and read this for Care of Magical Creatures. The next class is Charms and our charm is Lumos Maxima and for or the prompt for that is to read a book with a white cover. Now, the book that I'm reading is an ebook, but the cover shown on the ebook when I borrow it from my library is a predominantly white cover, and that is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. You can see right here, it's a white cover. That's the copy that I will be reading for this, so. It counts. I would get the physical copy, but everything's closed. Library's closed. We're doing a lot of ebooks this month. Next class is class number three, which is divination. And for divination, we are learning about our third eye. And you just assign a number to your TBR and then randomly draw. I did this off screen. I took all of my 1930s books that I wasn't using for other prompts, there are five of them remained, and I numbered them one through five based on the year, did a random draw, and landed on For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway. So this is my randomly chosen book. Next up is Herbology, and our herbology plant that we are learning about this year is the Mimbulus Mimbletonia. I probably pronounced that wrong, but the point of it is we need a book that starts with M. 
and the rules for this one in case anybody cares is if it starts with like an a, a an a or a the in the next words an m that counts mine doesn't apply to this for this i am reading a short story that is found in this bind up but it is available by itself on goodreads and it is called uh madame pelagie i think is how you say her name french is not my language but it's by kate choppin it's a short story by kate choppin about a creole woman and i think there's an affair in it but i could be wrong but yes short story covers our herbology prompt number five is muggle studies and for muggle studies we, we got to read a muggle book so the prompt for this is to read a contemporary and a contemporary is basically something that happens in the real world a lot of people consider contemporaries like modern books but it doesn't actually have to be a modern book to be a contemporary it just has to be modern for the time it was published in so for this i am reading their eyes were watching god by zora neale hurston this is a contemporary set in brooklyn in the 1930s so it was contemporary in the 1930s is it contemporary today no but the prompt said that it just had to be a contemporary not a modern contemporary so zora neale hurston their eyes were watching god this is a really well-known book. It's apparently very powerful. I was supposed to read it in college, but we ended up behind that semester for some reason, and I didn't end up reading it, so now's as good a time as ever. Number six is potions, and for the potions class we are studying the shrinking solution this year, and the prompt for this is to read a book under 150 pages. I don't actually have just a book under 150 pages. Usually my 19 or my century reading, I have at least one book that's really short. My shortest book for this century was 218 pages. So I'm just picking a short story. I enjoyed reading H.P. Lovecraft's short story last month so much that I decided to read another one of his stories and I am reading I think his most well-known story which is The Call of Cthulhu and it is 25 pages. <laughs> you can also find it by itself on Goodreads so it counts as a standalone 25 pages long perfect for this prompt. And the last class is astronomy where we're taking night classes with this one the prompt is to read a book mostly at night or at least in the dark and you can really pick any book for this but i've decided that i will only read one of my 1930s books which is the shape of things to come by hg wells when it is dark outside so that's the only prompt for that one should be pretty easy to accomplish that particular book may change yeah it may end up changing and i just read some random book only at night but for right now that is the plan to just read that one only when it's dark outside that's not a huge stickler on my tbr because it doesn't really require a specific book just a specific reading time And that's all of my magical TBR. I am super, super, super excited for the owls this month. Let me know down in the comments below if you are participating in the owls and what book you're excited about most in your TBR. If you liked this content, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Leave a comment down below and I will see you Tuesday.